The topic is unity in the Muslim Ummah. This is an important, a unique, and a very sensitive talk. Important because none of the Muslims will disagree that there is no unity in the Muslim Ummah. So it's a very important topic. It is a unique topic because, <clears throat> as most of you may be aware, that most of my talks are targeted towards Dawa, targeted towards the non-Muslims as well as the Muslims together. And I usually give two types of talks. One type which is related to comparative religion. For example, similarities between Hinduism and Islam, similarities between Islam and Christianity, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Hindu scriptures, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the world, various world scriptures. Is Jesus God? Was Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, crucified? And various talks. These talks, though they are targeted or meant for the non-Muslims, giving them knowledge about Islam and the comparative religion, it even benefits the Muslims to a great extent to do dawa amongst the non-Muslim friends. So it's for both. Though the topic is on comparative religion, it's meant for both. For the non-Muslims giving knowledge about Islam and for the Muslims giving knowledge about comparative religion, how to do dawa. The other group of talks that I give is mainly on issues which are current which the media attacks Islam. For example, women's rights in Islam. Or people think today is the age of science and technology. Islam is outdated. So Quran and modern science. These talks of second groups, it caters to both. The Muslims get knowledge about the rights of the women in Islam, about how scientific the Islamic religion. At the same time, the Muslims are also educated about the religion, about the good points about the haq of the religion. There are very few talks which I have given, hardly any, which especially cater only to the Muslims. For example, Al Quran should it be read with understanding? Because some of the Muslims say that Quran should not be read with understanding, so I gave that talk. Or Dawa or destruction. These talks are exclusively for the Muslims even though the non-Muslim will benefit but it is more targeted towards the Muslims so today's talk I say is unique because it is more it's mainly meant for the Muslims the non-Muslim may also benefit but mainly meant for the Muslims unity in the Muslim Ummah and I say my talk is going to be sensitive unlike my other talks meant for the Muslims only a small group of Muslims believe that Quran should not be read with understanding the majority believes it should be read with understanding some group of Muslims say Dawah should not be done majority believe it should be done but this topic unity in the Muslim Mumma is sensitive it involves each and every one of us each and every type of Muslim therefore I say it's sensitive and I request all of you Death, please pay careful attention to the matter of my talk. Inshallah, it will be enlightening. At the same time, it will show you the true picture of Islam. Inshallah. Therefore, please pay careful attention to my talk. This talk of mine, Unity in the Muslim Ummah, I may not be able to cover all the aspects, all the solution. I'll try and cover the major ones. Number one reason for disunity in the Muslim Ummah is because of the various sects that we have, as well as the various schools of thoughts amongst the Muslim Ummah. You may call it Madhab, you may call it Maslak, you may call it Musalla. So the main reason, number one, the major reason is because of the various sects that are there in the Muslim Ummah and the various schools of thoughts, the Madhabs or the Maslaks. 
or the musallas we call it inshallah at least i'll try and cover this major point and if time permits some other points also and quite a large portion of my talk will be in the form of question and answer which is usually asked in our day to day life so that whatever questions i pose each individual can ask that same question to himself and give the reply to himself so that you may come to know where does each individual stand and as most of you know the master key for dawa of isla according to me in the quran the verse of the quran is surah al imran chapter number 3 verse number 64 which says kul ya ahl al kitab say o people of the book talu ila qalmatin sawa in bainana bainakum come to common terms as the us and you which is the first term allah na uda illallah that we worship none but allah wala nushrika bihi shay'an that we associate no partners with him wala yattakhiza ba'd dun ba'd dan arbaban min dunillah that we erect not among ourselves lords and patrons other than allah but if they turn back fakulu shadu say e be witness be anna muslimun that we are muslims bowing our will to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i have mentioned in several of my talks that this verse of the quran which says come to common terms as between us and you though it mentions ahle kitab specifically referring to the jews and christian it can refer to any type of non muslim whether he be hindu or a buddhist or a jain come to common terms as between us and you and if we take it a step further according to me it can even apply to the muslim umma that when we have differences in the muslim umma the best thing to do is talu ila qalmatin sawa in baina bainakum come to common terms as between us and you so this part of the verse according to me can also be used for the muslim umma and it is the best way for doing islah for correcting the muslim for getting them to the straight path normally when you ask any muslim which is the most authentic and best book of islam which is the best source of knowledge in islam can anyone guess quran mashallah you don't get any award for that simple question simple answer no one will disagree he may not be a practicing muslim but if you ask any muslim which is the best book in islam the most authentic book the best source for knowledge in islam the answer is quran mashallah but nothing great the second question which is the next source of knowledge after the quran hadith mashallah no two difference hadith of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you may say sunna you may say hadith there is no two difference everyone agrees whichever type of muslim he may be he agrees the first main source is quran the next is hadith now most of us are aware that there are different types of hadith some hadith which are sahi hadith which are strong authentic some hadith are zaif hadith which are weak hadith some of them are maudu concocted fabricated hadith which hadith the muslim should follow sahi hadith mashallah three questions the answer remains the same it will not differ any type of muslim you ask whichever group you may belong to whichever sect you may belong to the answer is the same number one source is quran allah's kalam allah's word number two source is the saying of the prophet the hadith the narration of the prophet number three that in the hadith what we have to follow is the sahi hadith no two view at all tala wala kalmatin sawa in bayna bainakum come to common terms as been us and you now based on these three answers we proceed further but when i ask a muslim that what is he or what school of thought he belongs to or what is his madhab most of the indians they tell me they are hanafi 
Some may say they are Shafi. If I go outside India and I ask this question, besides Hanafi and Shafi, I may get the reply, I'm a Hanbali. Or some may say I'm a Malaki. But in India, majority of the Muslims, they call themselves Hanafi. Some even call themselves Shafi. There are others, but these two are the major groups. I ask the next question. Brother, why are you a 